I wanted to kind of set the context for this conversation and the, the many more conversations that we're going to have. Um, and I wanted to share a little bit of what we uh, always refer as dropping a little bit of truth uh, and being completely honest. Uh, you know, what inspired me to run for public office was the desire to address inequities, disparities, injustices by sitting at the decision making table. Um, I had been uh, working very, being real busy working on a community level uh, as an advocate for quite a while and um, concluded that it was going to be much more effective and impactful to do whatever I could to try to get at the decision making table to see if changes, um, at least the ones that I felt I could make in my, you know, small way uh, could be effective. After 14 years of proactively proposing policies and laws and funding to address the disproportionality, uh, proposing, um, you know, proposing policies, etc., I concluded that we needed legislation that would structurally help this county achieve equity. Uh, I believe very strongly, and I've said this before, that working on these issues should not depend on who's sitting in particular seats. Uh, we needed to have a structural framework that outlives anyone uh, and that methodically and with urgency goes through uh, every single decision that we make facing the data uh, to determine if such decision helps eliminate the disparities or exacerbates the existing disparities. And even though it sounds like maybe this is too much that we can't wait and that this would take too long. The reality is that the more you peel back the layers of the onion of this horrid uh, institutionalized racism that we face in this country, the more you understand that we have to have structural ways to address this and to eliminate it piece by piece with urgency. So it is very interesting that when we embarked on this work last year, it was one of my priorities in my presidency. It's very interesting to think that, you know, we decided to take the year to go through this conversation. We had amazing, I thought, um, workshops, you know, the entire Montgomery County leadership attended workshops on, on racial equity, um, you know, examining the root causes, the history uh, both uh, for our black community as well as the Latino community. Uh, and I know that we all learned a lot. I mean, I pride myself in, in being proactive and having educated myself quite a bit, but there was no doubt that I think we all learned a lot and we really had to reflect on our roles vis-a-vis uh, -vis this history and what we're faced to do and the decisions that we have to make. Um, it's amazing that we had, you know, over a thousand people participate in the community conversations, our youth participated in these conversations. We develop a toolkit so more people could engage in the conversation. We have a baseline report on our existing disparities in the county, Office of Legislative Oversight uh, also published two reports. And so a lot of work went into the, um, the, the goal, getting to the goal of adopting legislation. Little did we know that literally a couple of months later, two crises would just come face to face, COVID-19 and people taking the streets saying enough, enough. We don't wanna see, we don't wanna have to deal with seeing more and more black men, unarmed black men being murdered in the streets. And it, it is really telling, um, and it's something that actually my daughter has pointed out to me that the chant, I can't breathe, applies both to COVID-19 as a pandemic, as well as what we're seeing all over the country when it comes to police brutality. So it's very uh, poignant that this, this particular phrase, I can't breathe, which I think many of us, I find myself constantly having to take deep breaths because the, the scope of these crises are just overwhelming. So who knew that we would be here? Um, and I think it has more than ever put a spotlight on 
the many reasons why we have to do this work and we have to do it diligently and we have to do it with urgency and it has to be prioritized. There is no doubt. We saw early on, we knew right before the governor decided and we sent a letter asking him for zip code data, we saw that 20902, a zip code where I lived my first uh, 10 years on the, in the county, to 0904 where I live right now, and to 0906 are the most is the highly impacted. These are the areas of the county where you have the highest concentration of Latino and black communities. So we know that when it comes to this issue of public health and Council Member Juwanda led the charge on the resolution, we know we have a problem. And now it's just completely, you know, it's, it's just facing us in a consistent way. I want to acknowledge that many people have been working on these issues. You know, the minority health initiatives have been talking about this forever. We have been funding them. We have been doing a lot of things. You know, we have created this network of clinics. I mean, I think that we can all go through so many things that we have done. But as I said earlier, here we are. And this is why we need to have a structural way of figuring out how are we investing our dollars and how are our policies helping to dismantle this persistent ill in our county and hopefully in our country?